Hello everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and welcome to my 2018 tutorial on using Google Calendar. I'm going to show you everything that you need to know to get up and running with Google Calendar. I'm going to go pretty fast so that I can cover all of these features, so remember that you can always pause and rewind if you need to. To get started with Google Calendar, you can visit calendar.google.com. You need to log in with a Google account, so you can either log in with a Google account that already exists, or you could click More Options and then Create Account. I already have an account that I'd like to use. I've got it entered up here, so I'm just going to log in. All right, so when we first log into Google Calendar, you can see that uh, we're looking at our calendar. And right now, we are in the weekly view. So just to kind of get started, let's take a look at a few things about the user interface, and then we'll talk about creating events, multiple calendars, sharing calendars, uh, that sort of thing. So up here at the top right, you'll notice that this is where we can change our view. So like I said, by default, we're in the week view, but we could also change it to say a month view. So we can see the whole month here. Uh, we could also change it to um, just a schedule view, which used to be called agenda here in Google Calendar. And this just shows you all of your upcoming events. So this is a really useful feature if you have a lot of meetings and you just wanna kinda see an outline of when those meetings are gonna be, you could go into the schedule view. And you can see there's a number of different options up here as well. I tend to work in the month view uh, and the week view. So let's put it on the month view for now. And to kind of jump right in, let's just get started and create an event here on Google Calendar. So uh, there are a couple of different ways to create an event. You can either click on the plus icon down here at the bottom right, or you can just click right on the calendar where you'd like to create that event. So let's say I want to create an event for tomorrow. I can just click on Friday, and then a little box pops up, which allows me to add some information about this event. So we can just call this meeting. Notice that uh, it's scheduled for the day that I clicked on, but if we wanna add a time, we'll have to do that by clicking the add time button. We can say it is from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. If we wanted, we could also click on the more options button. And you'll notice that it takes us to a much larger screen where we have a lot more options for configuring an event. So we could have just clicked save from the little pop-up and it would have saved an event for us, but we wouldn't have added a description. We wouldn't have invited anybody. Um, so that's a good way to quickly create an event. But if you really want to uh, create a detailed event that is going to be shared with other people, you probably want to click on more options and you can uh, fill out all the additional details at this screen. So notice up here at the top, we already selected the time that we'd like for this event. We could create it uh, as a repeating event. So if I click on this drop down, we could have it repeat every Friday, you know, yearly. Uh, you could even do custom repeats. So uh, you could have it repeat every other week, that sort of thing. Uh, so there's a lot of options for that as well. We could add a location if we wanted to. Uh, we could add uh, that it's a video conference. So we could automatically put the link to say a Google Hangout in here. Uh, notifications. Notifications are pretty important. So you can see that by default, we're going to receive a notification 30 minutes prior to the event. That notification here in Google Calendar is basically a pop-up on your computer, uh, and you have to be logged into a Google service. So Gmail, Google Calendar, Google Drive, something like that to receive that pop-up. But additionally, you could click on the Add Notification button. You could add, say, an email notification, and you could specify any time frame that you'd like. So you could say, oh, I'd like an email one day before, or you could have chosen one week before, or you can add multiple notifications. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility in terms of making sure that you don't forget about a particular event here in Google Calendar. Down here uh, where we see the calendar symbol, this is where we can uh, select the event color, and that's just um, going to determine what color the event shows up in our actual calendar. Um, and then uh, you'll notice that right here it says, ansonalex2018 at gmail.com. This is the calendar uh, that this event is going to be created on, but we can have multiple calendars here in Google Calendar, which I'm going to talk about in a few minutes. Um, so uh, if you are going to use multiple calendars, you always wanna make sure that you're creating uh, the event on the calendar that you'd like to use. So an example of using multiple calendars might be a personal calendar and a work calendar, okay? You're gonna separate your personal and your work events. You can view them all at once if you'd like, or you can only view your work events or only view your personal events. And again, we're gonna look at that in a few minutes here. So then we could add a description to the event down here below. And then over here on the right, we could add guests. So we can just click in the add guests field, and then we could go ahead and enter email addresses uh, for people that we'd like to invite. So I just invited another one of my email addresses to this event. Then when you're ready, you can go ahead and click save up here at the top. Asks if you'd like to send invitations. Sure, why not? So now you can see on our calendar, we have a meeting scheduled for 1 p.m. on Friday the 23rd. And if I were to switch over here to the schedule view, 
you'll notice that our meeting appears here as well. Okay, so now let's talk about using multiple calendars here in Google Calendar. Uh, and to do that, I want to take a look at the left side of our screen. You'll notice that we have this section called My Calendars, and this is where all of your calendars are going to be listed that you create here in Google Calendar. By default, you have three calendars that are pre-created for you. Well, actually, three that are created for you, and then one other one that has already been shared with you. So your default calendar is going to be the name of your account. So you can see mine's Anson Alexander. Then it also includes a birthdays calendar, so that's linked to any contacts that you have in Google Contacts, and if their birthdays are in there, they'll show up on your calendar. And then there's the tasks calendar, which would show any tasks that you've added um, through Google, your Google Tasks. So uh, by default, all events are going to be created on your primary calendar, but uh, we could add another calendar if we wanted to, simply by clicking on the plus symbol up here at the top. And you'll notice that we have a few different options. Uh, so if a friend had sent us a link to a calendar, we could add that calendar here as well. Uh, but for us to create a new personal calendar, we can just click on New Calendar. We can go ahead and give that calendar a name. I'll just call it Work. We can choose the time zone and then click Create Calendar. Notice that when I do that, we now have a calendar over here on the left side of the screen uh, called Work. Let's go back. It took us to our settings and you'll notice that we have this purple calendar. So if I go to create another event, say if I create an event on Saturday just by clicking, right here in this pop-up, you'll notice that there's this drop-down and I now have the option to choose which calendar I'd like to put this event on. So I could put on the work calendar. I could go to more options. You'll notice that um, now that we have two calendars we've created, when we create an event, we can also change which calendar it's on. So I could even go back, let's close this event, I could go back to our other event, our meeting at 1 p.m., we can see all the information here, but I could click on the, oops, we'll hit, got it here. I could click on the pencil symbol here to edit the event. This is how we can edit events after they've already been created. And I could switch the calendar to my work calendar. I could click save, and you'll notice that it has now been added to my work calendar. Let's see, it added it to both. Let's see if I refresh. Know, for some reason, it duplicated the event. Well, that gives me an opportunity to show you that now I could go ahead and I could delete this event from my personal calendar, from the blue calendar, but you'll notice that it may, remains on the purple calendar, my work calendar. So this is a great way to categorize your different meetings and events um, and be able to separate your work and your uh, personal life. And you could also, if you're part of organizations like nonprofits or volunteer organizations, you could have a calendar for them too. And at any time, we can go over here to the left and we can hide or display any of our calendars. So if I click the check mark next to work, you'll notice that the event from work disappears because I'm now only looking at events on the Anson Alexander calendar. And then if I click the checkbox, you'll notice that the event now appears again. So again, this is a great way you can look at all of your events from all your calendars at once, or you can drill down to a specific calendar. Notice that over here on the left where we have my calendars, we can also click the three dots to the right of a calendar. And you'll notice that we have this option that says settings and sharing. So if we click on that, we can manage all of the settings about our calendars. So we could add a description to a specific calendar. We could make the calendar public. So that might be for like a volunteer organization. Uh, you might be putting up a schedule of when you're holding uh, volunteer events and anybody can look at it and come if they want. So you could make that calendar public. You could add people to share this calendar with. So if you were to share this calendar with somebody, it would then show up in the other calendar section in their Google Calendar. Okay. And when you do that, let's say I add, let's add this, uh, other email address. Notice that we can specify permissions. So I can make it so that this person can only see the events on the calendar, or I could allow them to manage events, uh, make changes to events, or actually make changes to events and manage sharing. So you can, you have some options in terms of the uh, visibility and the permissions that users have when you share a calendar with them. So we'll, we'll go ahead and share it. And then it asks me if I'd like to invite them to the calendar, we'll go ahead and click invite. So now they've been added. Um, so we could specify default notifications for events on this calendar. Um, you can kind of go through here and you can look at this. You can embed this calendar on a website. So again, that's great for a public calendar for like a nonprofit organization. And then you can also uh, remove the calendar down here at the bottom. You can delete it if you'd like, or you can unsubscribe to a calendar that somebody else has shared with you. So let's go back into Google Calendar. So this is where I mentioned if somebody shares a calendar with you, it's going to be displayed down here in the other calendar section. And just like in my calendars, we can uh, display and hide calendars in this section as well. Let's just quickly take a look at a few other places here in Google Calendar. Let's go up to the top right. And to access our settings, we can click on this gear icon up here. 
and you'll notice that uh, there's some different options up here. We could change our density and color of our calendar, um, kind of like we can uh, change the layout in Gmail. But if we click on the actual settings option, it takes us to our general settings. We've already been here in settings uh, in this video so far, uh, but we haven't been in the general section. So these are settings that will affect all of your calendars. So you can uh, you can kind of take a look at a lot of these on your own. Uh, some of the more useful ones um, would be looking changing like some of your default event settings, um, your view options. So whether you want to see weekends, you can choose which day your weekday your week starts on so you could make it start on Sunday or you could change it to Monday if you wanted to um, so you can kind of look through here on your own uh, down here at the bottom we have the import and export area so this is where we could import a calendar uh, from another system like a an Apple calendar or something like that Outlook or we could also export our Google calendar and then import it into another system and uh, obviously if you're using an Android device uh, I believe the default calendar is Google calendar on Android but if you're using iOS you can actually add Google Calendar um, right from your main iOS settings, your mail and contacts and calendar settings. And then all of your Google Calendar events will also show up in iCal as well. So uh, that's how you can use that on iOS or even on a Mac computer. Uh, so I hope you all found this video helpful. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. And if you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all I have for you for today. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.